Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with another edition of Before the Bell for Wednesday, October 26th, 6.53 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run that player at 1.5x. Taking a quick look at futures, uh, Bitcoin appears to be making a move up 2%, breaking out of a consolidation base. Equ uh, excuse me, uh, large caps down 7 tenths. NASDAQ down 1.6%. Uh, small caps actually green up about six tenths of a percent and copper up 2%. Um, moving on to macro today, international trade, uh, mortgage applications, retail and wholesale inventories. Of course, we've got oil inventories at 1030. And then we've got a five-year bond auction at 1 p.m. Over on the earnings front, uh, before the bell, Boeing, Kraft Heinz, Hess in the energy space, General Dynamics in the defense space, and Harley Davidson in the consumer space. Also, after the bell, we've got Meta, Ford, Teladoc, EQT, which is a natural gas focused. Uh, EMP energy name that's been a leader uh, in the in the uh, uh, nat gas trading arena and we've got KLAC in the semiconductor equipment uh, manufacturing space so those that's a pretty good mix today across uh, uh, several industry groups that warrant some uh, warrant some attention i think even just to get a read on uh you know the particular segment that they're in so last night i mean we had a great day yesterday in the equity markets of course yesterday we talked about uh the market moving ability of mega cap tech microsoft and google both had the rugs pulled uh, after their earnings uh, release, uh, which draw, uh, chop down uh, uh, the cues in particular, but was an overall drag. So we'll get into that kind of a you know, you, if you're if you're bullish, you want of course those things to go up, but it wasn't the case. So I think there was a lot of disappointment there. So, but let's go through our 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 uh, our deck. And one of the things I'm going to do at the end is look at auto retailers. I think there's some stuff going on there uh, that I want to bring to your attention. But on the dollar, uh, significant move over the last three days. We had gone up to uh, almost touch 114 and a quick move down. And now we're right into that support area of both lateral support at 111 and we've got this uh, well-defined uptrend line. Now, what I would, would expect, just from a technical standpoint, is to not break through today, to you know, put in whatever kind of little bounce, because we haven't been down there in a long time. So, but regardless of what I think might happen, it's a lot more important to watch what happens. Keep the dollar index. Uh, you can look at UUP uh, as a as a read on that. You can trade that on a daily basis. But a break here, getting the dollar to break its uptrend line would be significant, and I think that would uh, boost equities. And yesterday, with the one percent down move in in the dollar. That certainly was a contributing factor to uh, the good day that we had yesterday in equities. Also, had a big pop in TLT. Now, the uh, conspiracy theorists out there have, uh, uh, we're talking about Treasury intervening in this market to uh, buy, buy bonds. Uh, you know, make, make the, make the, um, make the conditions that bonds would be bought yesterday. I don't know if that's true, 
but when you're up 3% on something that's been cascading, you know, that's going to be another helpful factor. We're just going to have to see if this was more or less an, an oversold type of a, of a bounce or something where this could actually rally back towards 97 and then 101. I kind of doubt it, but you know, that's why we watch the charts. Um, VIX also had a positive move. We broke below 29. We had been watching this as a support zone between 29 and 30. VIX was able to crack below. Now, of course, I haven't changed it, but now this 29 to 30 becomes resistance. And you, we, wanted, we want to keep the VIX. We want to see the VIX pinned below 29. And that will keep the pressure on equities to go higher. Uh, Bitcoin, we've been watching this downtrend line. We've been watching this uh, long, long, long consolidation. And it looks like, uh, you know, we, we talked about getting a, the baby breakout the other day. And now it looks like it's accelerating. So if you're in, you know, GBTC or one of the other proxies, I think, and you took the long trade, I think you're in good shape. I'd be looking for a tag of 21,500 here at the top of this little value range. And then uh, it'll get a lot tougher there. But if it can crack through that, then uh, you got an open door up to 24,000. And regardless of whether you're trading Bitcoin or not, I still think it's a real good uh, liquidity proxy and something that you can watch along with your equity trading that if Bitcoin is rising, risk appetite is rising and that usually is good for equities. Uh, oil didn't do anything yesterday. We've been putting in multiple, multiple days of uh, doji type trading and a doji just means indecision. You go up, you go down, and then finish right at the same spot you started. So that's been uh, stuck in the weeds. We'll have to see if it can uh, break out. Uh, gold didn't do anything yesterday as well. I'd have 154.50 alarmed in your uh, platform if you're interested in taking that long. Uh, one place we did get some developments is uh, uh, somewhat of a moonshot on our oscillators. So now we're up here at 60 and we need to be aware that we're entering into overbought conditions. And we've got the same exact thing on, on the uh, NAMO, the NASDAQ oscillator, where we're right up here at 60. So we'll have to see like today. It's not how we open, right? You're going to see, you know, big red numbers on Microsoft. You're going to see big red numbers on Google. You're going to see red numbers on Amazon. But do they buy? Do they buy them up? Are those viewed as opportunities to buy and fill that gap versus opportunities to sell everything else, you know, watch Netflix, watch Tesla, watch Apple, watch Meta, uh, you know, for example, in that technology group. And if you see all those red, you know that it's already reversed. If you see buying across the board, then you'll know that we're moving into higher uh, overbought conditions. So when we go to SPY, of course, these are closing prices. They're not reflective of the after hours move. But yesterday we were up 1.6%. Uh, we were able to take out this declining 50. So now overhead, we've got like 386 and then 390 coming in here to this 50% uh, retracement area. And just remember that that's a common reversal point. 
So if we do end up challenging this area, that would be a perfect place if you've held long exposure to go to the bank and if you want to stay long, do so at an at the money strike versus you know having a lot of embedded gains in your position. At least that's what uh, I'm going to do. And you see here that we pretty much broke higher out of the box, got above this 50 EMA and worked our way higher uh, most of the day. And you can see here this little channel that I've got starts running into the high end of the channel right here at lateral resistance. So I would imagine if we made it up to, you know, 387.50, 388, it's going to get tougher. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, to get a pullback there. You know, maybe come back into the midpoint. Then if things still look constructive, make a move higher. I think today, as far as bigger type signals, you want to hold the 50. You want to hold this three, eight, let's see where the, um, uh, well, I don't, I don't have the 50 EMA exactly because that comes from the daily chart. Let's look at it real quick. Yeah. 380 on the button is your, uh, uh, 50 EMA on the daily. So on any kind of pullback that aligns really well with the midpoint of the channel. So on any pullback, <coughs> I think you want to see it hold 380 because just remember our, our technical tenants. You don't want to lose the midpoint of the channel. You don't want to lose a key moving average. If you lost 380, I would expect a, a pullback into 377.50, 377.50 to again tag the bottom of the channel and then that's your real uh, call it line in the sand you break 377 and drop out of this channel probably going to roll down to 370 at that major pivot level again cues a little different story right here you can see price stopped right at the 50 and so I've moved up the uh, the central pivot up to 285 got to take out the 50 if we're going to move higher and if it gets uh, stopped there obviously we've got 280 and then 270 to the downside if the whole thing uh, begins to roll over but you can see yesterday we filled this gap. We broke above this uh, uh, pivot point that we had right around 279, 280, and worked our way up to 285, uh, approaching the top of the channel, at least the way I've drawn it. And then we know that the, I don't have it marked in here. You may want to do that on your charts, but you got the 50 EMA right here at 285. Um, commonplace for it to reject you can see that we had a touch here reject you had support back along here uh, so that makes that along with the 50 makes 285 really really important um, moving on to small caps uh, we've actually yesterday uh, closed above a key level here uh, you can see back in time support series of resistance support resistance resistance and now got a mini breakout and actually if you remember small caps are actually green this morning so that is a very good sign and if we go down to our 60 minute chart you can see that we have broke out of this $12 wide consolidation range. We've put in what looks to me like a bull flag. Here's your flagpole. 
here's your flag. You get a breakout above 179, then uh, you'll have a sticking point right here at 181. But if you look at the measured move, if we get up there, then just on a measured move basis, uh, that would put you up in the uh, 183 area just just from this little intermediate move and but then also keep the big picture in mind that we've broken out of a $12 trading range and 12 on to uh, 176 put you up in this 188 range and then you're in the middle of this gap and then I would favor going on up to 189 to fill that on any kind of pullback got to hold 176 uh if the cues and spy you know start rolling over hard and you get this pullback into 176 that fails then that makes this look like a fake breakout and then you've got a very objective short against 176 as price uh, re-enters the top of this big trading range and I would think at a minimum uh, that you'd get a move down to the midpoint at 173 so be ready for any eventuality on uh, on uh, IWM uh, Meta had a really nice day yesterday, up 6%. Uh, broke out of this 134. Remember, that was the not only the bottom of the trading range, but also the top of the downtrend channel. And that, you know, if you didn't catch it down here, that was certainly a place to buy. And it made it right up to the midpoint here at 138. Now, uh, this thing got slammed after hours, so I don't know where it's going to exactly open up, but it's certainly going to be back down inside of uh, the downtrend channel. But here's what I want you to watch for is with that big gap down, you know, if it starts making a move higher, there's the potential of a, a gap fill higher. Even if it's just to go up for a touch and then reverse. Now we've got uh, earnings after the bell. So I think one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to try to buy it up or it's just going to oscillate and wait given uh, Google and Microsoft results. Maybe they'll maybe the buyers will be uh, kind of timid there and not want to do much with it today. And then, you know, after having gone back in this channel, if there's a bad result, then a move down to the bottom of the channel and really the key spot would be uh, 127 in my mind. Of course, you're not going to be able to catch that after hours I mean it's gonna happen in you know five seconds if that's what it wants to do and then we'd have a you know a total kind of a reset on meta and then this move here will of course look fake right it was just a technical move up to the middle that got rejected after hours and down so we're gonna to have to watch meta really really closely um, Apple had a really nice day, up 2%. Uh, we uh, had filled this gap. There was another gap up here that was filled. We're working our way up to the top of the channel. What I want to see on a pullback, if that's what we get, is this uh, 150 and a half hold. That represents dual support. You've got uh, lateral support going across, and you've got the midpoint of the channel right here. So I would want that to hold. Of course, earnings are uh, tomorrow after the bell. 
but if you lose the midpoint of the channel uh, that wouldn't be particularly uh, encouraging then you open the door back to the top of the old gap and then down to the bottom of the channel so uh, I would be watching that 150 and a half like a hawk on any kind of a pullback and if you get it and it holds then you've got an objective long into earnings where this could push up towards this uh, 154 and a half type area where things will get a little bit tougher we'll be back towards the top of the gap again or excuse me top of the top of the range where uh, resistance comes in uh, Tesla had an interesting day came up here we had talked about 215 now there was a gap between uh, 215 and approximately 222 uh, moving into that gap yesterday if you had wanted to trade it that was your objective buy and then uh, it found a resistance and just hesitated now I looked pre-market it really didn't take much of a hit yesterday so I think today you've got a nice pivot point whether you call that 220 or 222 I think I think for me uh, you know something below 220 would be an objective short for a move back to 215 and possibly you know 20750 if things start falling apart but if you get a breakout above 225 uh, I would take that long that would represent a breakout from uh, this big value range and it would take out this line of resistance that I've got in 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 light red and then I think you would be off to the races but to me just as it stands now you've got a nice uh, bull flag you've got an impulsive move higher followed by uh, you know five or six hours of consolidation right at resistance and then if you get that breakout then you can get the the second leg of the move so this looks quite constructive we'll have to see how it opens and then see you know what what the overall market uh, is doing uh, Microsoft had a nice day as well one one point three eight percent filled a gap in here came right up to this 250 where you see rejection rejection a little bit of support there but uh, this thing got creamed after hours and I think it's going to open down here along uh, uh, somewhere close to 235 where that has been solid support I think you'll have a good pivot point down here at 235 that should hold given the drop and given all this support but if it doesn't then you got the opportunity for a seven dollar gap fill if it loses 235 and I think that would be an excellent trade to take not a promise that it's going to work but that's about as objective as it gets because if it can't hold this big line of support at 235 once it gets below all these people are going to realize that they're wrong and don't forget that Um, a lot of people that were in this you know they didn't get out after hours they're still in it so if there's follow-up selling you're gonna see it down here you know wherever this thing opens um, so it'll be interesting to see if they can hold that line there at uh, 235 uh, and then Amazon took a big hit even though it wasn't in, you know directly involved in earnings uh, I took a peak pre-market and it's down towards this 115 area which again was our major pivot so I think there is going to be a, a big big uh, line to hold and of course it reports tomorrow after the bell as well 
So I think 115 is going to be an excellent pivot point for you today for active trading if they want to buy that up ahead of earnings or they decide just to, you know, get out. And if you were to lose 115 and certainly 114 where there was some support before, then this thing will start rolling downhill down to 112 and possibly even down to touch the top of this uh, uh, gap at 110. Uh, Google. Uh, this thing is all the way down in the uh, 98 area uh, that I looked pre-market. That's a big drop from 105. Remember, we had this line across 103 and we had a, a trading range from about 96 and a half to 100. So if we're down here at 98, I would not be surprised. And there's also a gap there. I wouldn't be surprised if we did a quick follow up sell bar down to 96 and a half to tag the bottom of the box. And then that would be your big uh, pivot point. Uh, I wouldn't try to grab this like right on the open unless you see, you know, some immediate selling and recapture of these levels. I would let that thing play out for 15 minutes. See if you don't get a move down to the bottom of the box to fill this gap and then uh, make more of a uh, informed decision and informed trade right there at 96 50 if you want to take it long against that or possibly you know if that were to break down uh, Netflix uh, open strong and then just consolidated right above the 200 at 290 uh, you know that thing will uh, most likely open down today uh, I think 290 would be a you know if it recaptured 290 I think that's a buy point if you got a pullback into 280 I think that's a buy point uh, if it loses 280 then I think you gotta uh, really consider uh, going the other way probably going to come down to 270 if things start to uh, fall apart SMH got the five dollar move up to 190 uh, I did not look at the chart, but I heard uh, Texas Instruments was a fail. Uh, so that's going to come back. Uh, I think 185 is going to be your solid pivot today. If it can hold that, and that's a big line. Look at all the rejections here and, and the support. So if it can hold 185 and things look to be stabilizing, then I think you can take it long. But, you know, as we say, if 185 fails, then you're back in this trading range. Then I would expect a $5 move down to 180 and then potentially back down to the bottom of the box. And then this would be, you know, your fake uh, breakout, your bull trap. ARC uh, got some good horsepower yesterday. Most were up about 6%. If you were long, against the uh, pivot down here I think you're in good shape what you want to see from here is number one take out the 50 number two break above the midpoint of the trading range at 1675 and then look for a move to the top of the box and by all means if the thing falls apart and you lose 15 uh, excuse me 1475 Respect your stop. Respect your stop there. It just uh, didn't work. Let's put it that way. Genomics. Nice move. Took out the 31 and, 31 and a half pivot point. Emerging above the downtrend channel. What you want to see now is a move to 34.25 at the bottom of this old trading range. And then that will be an important spot, not only because it's the bottom of the range, but you can see the declining 50 
will act as resistance right there at 34 as well. And then moving on to flagship fund, nice move, almost 7%. So if you took that buy at 36, you're in good shape. Stay long against 36 and then look for a move up to 40 where you could uh, tag both the bottom of the box and the declining uh, 50 EMA. Arc W, 5.5%, recaptured the bottom of the range, took out the downtrend line. So this is uh, technically looking a lot better. Right here, your next objective overhead is to take out the declining 50 that comes right in at 49. If you can clear that, then you've got a path up to uh, 5250 would be your next uh, objective level. On the downside, if you lost uh, 46, I would be concerned because then you're you're back below again. So, been some choppy trading in here, but I mean that was a, a nice impulsive bar. I think a lot is going to depend on market conditions today. You know, if they decide to, you know, take everything down, or can they isolate it? to just, you know, Microsoft and uh, Google. Uh, now I want to move into uh, a, a new sector, and that's uh, autos and auto loans. Ally Financial is uh, the biggest car loan-focused bank out there. Used to, I think it used to be the uh, this was spun out of General Motors, used to be their lending arm. You can see here we peaked and we come back down. We're below the pre-COVID <coughs> highs. And you can see down here at uh, 24 is support on the monthly chart. And I just want to say this. I've been seeing some stuff online where uh, we know what happened that you know, with COVID, the semiconductor shortages, all that kind of stuff. New cars weren't available. The used car market did an absolute moonshot, right? So anybody that bought those cars with used car prices now falling through the floor, they're way, way, way underwater, right? Anybody that bought a car really within the a used car really within since COVID, uh, they're losing money literally every day on the value of their cars. And if we are headed towards a recession, you know, in the first half of next year, um, I've been seeing stuff online that if you're in one of these predicaments and you get pinched, you know, your family finances get pinched, you just hand them the keys. Remember, that's what happened in the great financial crisis with these, uh, you know, out of control mortgages you know, subprime mortgages type thing where people were just, you know, turning in the keys. Don't even worry, you know, never make a payment uh, kind of thing. Uh, just hand the keys back and it's the bank's problem. And maybe you get to live in the house another five years before they find you kind of thing. Um, the same type of dynamic is starting in, in these uh, subprime uh, car loans. Uh, they relaxed a lot of lending standards after COVID to allow people to, you know, continue on. And my point being, I think there's going to be a lot more pain in the auto sector going forward as these rates plummet, or not as the as rates rise, but the value of these cars plummet. Uh, a company like Ally could really, 
really eat it. And you say, oh, well, it's already come down a lot. That's true. But the COVID low was 12. So we're still up here at, at um, you know, 26, 27. There could be a long way for this to fall. And I want to go on to the big used car dealers out there. Auto Nation being one of them. You can see that we're in a big consolidation range between, um, let's just round it off, 100 to 130. Notice the big void that comes into play, you know, below, you know, 98, 95, wherever you want to call it. I think these guys are going to have real, real trouble as these car loans spike, uh, the you know interest rates on car loans spike, and you know consumers get pinched. You get a break here. You could come down, you know, to 75, 76, and a heartbeat. And then remember where our pre-COVID high was, way down here at 50. So this thing could still be cut in half is what I'm saying. And I think it's worth uh, putting on your radar. Uh, CarMax has already broken. Uh, I've got it here on the weekly down at 55. Uh, well below the pre-COVID highs up here at 90. Now, you know, obviously we missed that. But Keep an eye on it because the COVID lows are down here at roughly 40. There may be a trade there to make as well. This is the Penske Auto Group. Now, they do a lot more than just used cars, but they're, you know, it's a significant part of their business. And you've got a clear line here at 90. And then below 90, you've got another support level at 70. But hey, that's 20 bucks off of 90. That's 20% or more, 25%. So I think that should be an alarm in your system. And there's some other ones uh, out there. I think Sonic Auto is one. You got Lithia Auto Group is another one. I'm not going to go through those charts. But uh, some of this consumer-related stuff, if in fact we're heading to you know toward harder times for the consumer, I think uh, these bear worth watching and setting up some alarms to the downside in case uh, these uh, auto names, auto exposed names uh, crack. I think those would be uh, uh, dynamic shorts to take if and when they uh, potentially crack. So let's leave it there. Um, continue to follow along on the VIX, TLT, you want VIX falling, you want TLT rising, and you want dollar falling to support equities. Um, let's see if, they, if, if buyers are still motivated after that uh, disappointment last night from Microsoft and Google. We still got Meta, Apple, and Amazon yet to report. We'll have to see if there's a big hangover because of uh, Microsoft and Google, or if people will say, you know, we're buying, we're buying the dip, um, which is always possible. Um, but I do think we've got some excellent pivot points to work off of, and just. Uh, Keep your head on a swivel. Be ready to go either way, um, as we always do. Stay, stay nimble. Uh, know where you're getting in. Know where you're getting out. And that way, you'll put yourself with the highest probability of putting on a good trade. So let's wrap it up there. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell to get my YouTube content. Then jump over in the show notes. You'll find a link to the blog site where you can add your email address. It takes all of 15 seconds. Then you'll get 
all my content delivered right to your email box and you'll get an invite to our trading room. It'd be great to have you. Um, and you can join the rest of the team in there either after hours or during the day, whatever uh, suits your schedule. You, uh, we'd be glad to have you. So let's wrap it up. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit and Compass. Talk to you next time.